Now, you know me, I absolutely love SEO people. So from the moment we start out as juniors all the way up to those really senior stages, we are amazing at hacking things together and building more functionality into what we do. That's why using Chrome is an SEO's best friend. Now, since I've started, I've been using all these different extensions to make Chrome a lot more functional and ultimately help me save much more time. So, this week we took to Twitter to ask the world's SEOs what plugins you guys are all using. To make this video easy to follow, we've broken it down into utility, technical, search intelligence, links, and workflow. So thank you to everyone who gave all our suggestions on Twitter. If you have any suggestions for plugins or extensions that you use with Chrome, please mention them in the comments down below and we'll jump in and maybe I can share a couple of extras with you as well. So, okay, let's get started. Firstly, you're going to want to download the Lighthouse extension so you can run speed reports from your browser. Now, there's two ways to run a Lighthouse speed report. Firstly, if you simply open up Chrome DevTools by hitting Command, Shift and C, it'll open it up for you, then go to the Audits tab and click Run a Report. Now, this is a great idea to see what you can actually optimise on the site for speed. Downside is lack of reporting and export functionality. That's where this browser plugin comes in really handy. Click the little lighthouse button, it will run the report and it will give you export options for CSV or HTML so you can easily share it with your team. The next one is essential for technical SEOs. Big shout out to John Fagan and Tom Gregan for calling this one out. It is of course the web developer plugin. The great thing about this plugin is it lets you disable elements like JavaScript, it highlights broken links on the page, it outlines all your H tags and all sorts of different HTML elements. It's really useful. So when you're diagnosing technical issues, you can zoom right in and see exactly where the problem is. On the subject of tech and how the site's actually built, Lewis Koch actually recommended Wappalizer. So essentially Wappalizer identifies the technology that's running on the site. Very cool. Next up, Tom Capper, the lead SEO consultant at Distilled, mentioned some absolute bangers, but there was one in particular that piqued my interest. It was a plugin by my buddy Chris Kemper, who runs Link Research Tools. It was a Firefox plugin called Redirect Trace. Essentially, it allows you to see all the daisy chain redirects and spits out a lovely report so you can see all the different redirect paths. Next up, Dan Taylor, the senior consultant at Salt Agency, recommended a plugin that he actually created called Spam Flag. Now, in his words, the way it works is you put in a domain and it highlights the links on the page to your domain that may be flagged as spammy links. He says they're currently revamping at the moment, but it's about to go back into the Chrome store again, so definitely one to look out for. Thanks, Dan. We're really looking forward to that new release. Next up, we would be remiss if we did not mention analytics and pixel helpers. So Kasha on Twitter reminded us the importance of analytics with a hat tip towards the GA debugger plugin and also the Facebook pixel helper. Essentially, these things allow you to audit your analytics tags at a page level so you can see everything that's firing. On the same topic of analytics, the organizer of the Take It Offline events and the head of SEO at Just Eat, Mr. Jerry White himself, waded in with some excellent enterprise solutions for auditing your analytics tags with a little bit more depth. In particular, he says use ObservePoint and also Data Slayer. Now, these are more fully featured tag and auditing systems that are built for enterprise level, but an excellent addition and I'd highly recommend you check them out. Next up, spelling and organization. Where would we be if we couldn't craft excellent emails to send to devs and annoy them about the technical updates we want to happen on the site? Well, Pitchbox voted for Grammarly, a plugin that helps your grammar and spelling. That's probably why all their tweets look so fantastically well spelled. Um, and on the same note, Carrie Hill also mentioned that she uses Calendarly, wow, that's a mouthful, so that she can send a link to people so they can book a time on the calendar to have a phone call with her instead of the usual thing that happens, which is 
email tennis, are you available at this time? No, are you available at this time? It's a nice all-rounder. And next up, and as an all-rounder plugin, Claire Carlyles on Twitter said that she uses a tool called SEO Minion, which pretty much looks like it does everything for you from href lang validation to on-page SEO to broken link checking. She even went to the bother of actually showing me the tool on the Type A Media site and actually highlighting some of the things that we need to fix. Thank you very much for that, Claire. Much appreciated. Another plugin that was mentioned by over half of the SEOs on Twitter was, of course, the one and only SEO Quake, which is actually a plugin that was designed by SEMrush. And essentially, it gives you domain level and URL level intelligence with hundreds of data points. So you can very quickly work out the quality of the URL you're looking at, as well as a bunch of really essential SEO information about the page. Next up, rendering. So Andrew from Optimizey, which is literally in my opinion, the best SEO meetup in the entire UK, um, recommended something called View Rendered Source, which is essentially showing you the browser itself when it renders code, what it's actually using and actually seeing versus what the server is actually serving up. Great if you're working with JavaScript sites using React or Angular or similar. Kushal from Twitter mentioned hreflang handler, which creates a drop-down box on the page with all the hreflang tags that are present, so you can really easily click on them and cross-reference the URLs that are in your hreflang markup, so you can make sure that they're correct. Insanely useful. Next up is redirect chain. So imagine you've been on the SEMrush site audit tool, and you can see lots of daisy chain redirects. Well, if you want to inspect this further, what we'd recommend is if you're not using the link research tool, link source one, you can use the IEMA redirect chain tool. Essentially, it shows you all the header responses and all the redirects the URL is going through in order to actually find out how many times the URL is daisy chaining so you can get it fixed really quickly. Shout out to Andy Drinkwater for that recommendation. Absolutely fantastic. Now, they say in life there are no shortcuts to success. That is, unless we're talking about keyboard shortcuts, and if you're in Chrome, you've got to learn your keyboard shortcuts. Need a new tab? Command T. Need to close the tab? Command W. How's about you need to get a brand new Google Sheet on the fly? Command L to select the search bar, then literally just type sheets.new. Boom. New spreadsheet. All right, so let's say that you've just put all these plugins into Chrome. You're gonna find out very quickly that Chrome is very RAM and resource hungry, and your machine is literally just gonna go and slow right down. That's why we need another plugin called the Great Suspender. Now, I'm not talking about stockings and suspenders. I'm talking about a plugin that suspends background actions in all of the non-active tabs so that your browser speeds up and only focuses on the thing that you're working on. So, if you're one of those guys that's got 100 tabs open at once, you absolutely need this in order to improve the performance of Chrome. Massive shout out to Daniel Cuttridge for this one. It's an excellent suggestion. Now, sometimes as an SEO, we just need to get data off a page in order to analyze it and start playing around with it. So, that's where some basic scraping tools come in really, really handy. So, if you wanna grab like a cluster of links that are sitting on a page and pull their anchor text and also URLs, Link Clump is definitely one you need to use. Essentially, just lasso around everything on the page and it copies it straight onto your clipboard. But, if you're looking for some more intense scraping, then I recommend a plugin called Scrape Similar. So essentially this works by selecting an element on the page. So let's say you're on Wikipedia, you'd select the top line of a table, right click and then hit scrape similar. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull the entire table of data out and export to CSV. Amazing for scraping data from tables in Wikipedia. Now whilst we're on the subject of scraping, our lead SEO consultant, Max Coupland, gave a great talk about using custom extraction using Screaming Frog at this year's Brighton SEO. Now, if you want to extract elements from a page, you're gonna to need to use something called XPath. And in order to use XPath, you need to construct XPath queries. You could do that manually, or you go to Chrome, inspect element, and then highlight the bit you wanna copy out, 
right click and copy as XPath. And that will literally take it out so you can stick it into your crawler and it'll start pulling all that stuff off the site for you, no coding needed. And last up, if you're a salesperson, Chris Simans recommends using Crystal Nose. This is a plugin that actually reads a LinkedIn profile and matches it to an email address to understand a little bit more about the person that you're actually trying to pitch. Now, for us salespeople, that is an absolute game changer. And also, if you're doing outreach, maybe try it on a couple of journalists. Now that's everything for this week's Weekly Wisdom. Thank you so much for tuning in. If I've missed a plugin or you've got one that you use all the time, please do mention it in the comments down below. And thank you so much to everyone on Twitter that made all those recommendations. So until next time, we will see you later.